you're looking at the largest single dish radio telescope in the world. It's called FAST and located within the mountains of southwestern China. And that is by far the most sensitive radio telescope in the world. I first went there while they were putting the first few things on the ground. And it was amazing to see how quickly in China you'd come back a year later and the whole dish would be built. At the heart of FAST is a primary multi-beam receiver designed and built by Australian scientists. China chose to collaborate with Australia because of our experience with the Parkes Radio Telescope in regional New South Wales. The Parkes Radio Telescope is by far one of the greatest telescopes in the world. It's been upgraded many, many, many times, so it keeps getting upgraded. It's not a 60-year-old telescope. The most recent upgrade was just a couple of years ago with a very wideband receiver system that allows us to observe the radio waves over a much wider bandwidth than any other telescope on the Earth. Parks has special significance to Dr. Shu Dai. His first visit was as an international student. I mean, the, the second you see the 64 meter big telescope there with wonderful weather, blue sky, I was really shocked. I saw this is the way to do astronomy. He later returned to Australia to complete his PhD under the supervision of George Hobbs, before accepting a teaching position at Western Sydney University, where his research focuses on rapidly spinning neutron stars known as pulsars. The Parkes Radio Telescope has detected more pulsars than any other facility in the world. Radio astronomy in Australia is really strong. The experience and expertise here are really the most attractive for a student in, in China. That's thanks in part to the work of people such as Professor Elaine Sadler. For more than 30 years, Professor Sadler has been at the forefront of research into astrophysics. Her team discovered a five billion year old galaxy using the ASCAP radio telescope in Western Australia. Now, five billion years ago, the Earth didn't exist. So in the time that that signal's been traveling to us from this galaxy, the sun has formed, it's made planets, the earth has settled down, it's got oceans, life has evolved, we've got a technology, we've built telescopes, and there we are just in time to catch this, this signal. Professor Sadler started working regularly with Chinese scientists seven years ago. She says international collaboration is critical to understanding our universe. I think one of the great things about Working collaboratively with people is it allows you to build up the trust and the common interests that allow you to make advances in science. Astronomy is a very collaborative science. You can't just do your own research simply on your own. It's about actually exchanging your idea with different people, different backgrounds, different expertise. If we don't have that, we're not doing the best science.